Welcome to the escarpment walkway, leading to the Fountain of the Friars and the Vimeiro Thermal Spa in Masira, Portugal. This route between Porto Novo and Macera winds gently through the Alcabrichel River Valley. It's mostly paved and nearly flat, following the lay of the land near sea level, depending on the loop you choose. Radiation levels along the paved road are low, ranging between 0.04 and 0.05 microsieverts per hour. Perched on the Cesaretas Karst Plateau, the area is mainly formed by limestone and evaporitic rocks. These formations are part of the Diapiro do Vimeiro, a geological structure that forces underground mineral waters to rise to the surface. The low radionuclide content of these rocks, coupled with the region's low altitude, results in low radiation levels. The scenery transforms as you walk, shifting from coastal breezes to lush riverbanks and dramatic limestone escarpments. This route also passes alongside several agricultural fields that I'll specifically want to visit. Still on the paved road, we reach the edge of one of these agricultural fields. The ambient dose equivalent rate remains low. Since many agricultural fields are fertilized and some fertilizers are potassium-based, I wonder whether radiation levels might increase in those areas. On the paved road, radiation levels remain low. This area is also classified as a moderate radon risk zone, which suggests the presence of trace amounts of uranium in the underlying soil and rock. In this context, the road may also offer some gamma radiation shielding from the soil and rock beneath. Potassium is a vital nutrient for plant growth, and potassium-based fertilizers are widely used in agriculture to boost crop yields and quality. 
However, a lesser known aspect of these fertilizers is their natural radioactivity and the potential for a slight increase in radiation levels in agricultural fields. The key to understanding this lies in potassium-40, a naturally occurring radioisotope present in all potassium. This unstable form of the element undergoes radioactive decay, making up a tiny fraction, about 0.012% of natural potassium. Yet it's found everywhere, including in soils, plants, animals, and even our bodies. On the paved road, even at the edge of these fields, radiation levels remain low. The application of potassium-based fertilizers does lead to a measurable, albeit usually minor, increase in the concentration of potassium-40 in the topsoil. This, in turn, can contribute to a slight increase in the terrestrial gamma dose rate in those specific areas. Yet, it is important to distinguish between potassium-based and phosphate fertilizers, as phosphate fertilizers may contain elevated levels of naturally occurring radionuclides from the uranium and thorium decay series, such as radium-226. While both fertilizer types contribute to naturally occurring radioactive materials, NORM, in agriculture, the pathways of contribution and the key radionuclides involved differ. Now we're going to enter this agricultural field. It seems radiation levels are starting to rise. The ambient dose equivalent rate has doubled. This was the route followed, as seen on Google Earth. Low ambient dose equivalent rates measured along the paved road are indicated in blue. Comparatively higher dose rates are shown in yellow, with increasing levels represented progressively in orange and red. Higher ambient dose equivalent rates were observed in the agricultural fields adjacent to the route.
Now, we're going to scan a larger portion of this agricultural field surface. Unfortunately, I won't be able to accumulate a gamma radiation spectrum with sufficient statistics, as I'm not planning to spend the night here. The ambient dose equivalent rate remains around 0.10 microsieverts per hour. We can infer that gamma radiation levels are slightly higher throughout the entire agricultural field. During this more extensive scan, a peak ambient dose equivalent rate of 116 nanosieverts per hour was recorded, which corresponds to approximately 0.12 microsieverts per hour. The two routes shown below in Radioverse are not mine, and they don't reflect gamma radiation emitted from the soil in this region. Instead, they represent radiation levels measured aboard a commercial aircraft flying over the area, corresponding to cosmic radiation exposure. Cosmic radiation levels at sea level are negligible compared to terrestrial gamma radiation levels. Back on the paved road, the ambient dose equivalent rates drop again to about half of what was measured in the agricultural field. While gamma radiation levels are significantly higher in this agricultural soil, the resulting increase in overall exposure is typically minimal and not considered a significant health risk under normal conditions.